Hi, my name is Gabor Sabo and I am going to give the second part of the Perl 6 series of presentations. This time I am going to introduce arrays. If you are interested in more Perl 6 related subjects, on this web page, on this URL, you can find more links. Let's see the first example. Just as in Perl 5, in Perl 6, the at mark symbolizes arrays. So this is the way you declare an array and put in three values, three strings in it. If you would like to print out the content of the array, you just type in say and the name of the array. If I switch now to the evaluation window, the REPL that we used in the first version of, of the presentations, and here I can type eval, slurp and the name of the file that will read in the file and evaluate the content. As you can see, it prints out the values just one after the other. You can't really make the difference between the values. So this is not really good for debugging purposes. Actually, if that's what you are after, then the best way is to use the Perl method name, the Perl method on the array. If I execute this one, it returns a, a string that if you evaluate, would return the original data structure. So this is really good for debugging purposes. If you only want to uh, print out one of the elements, for example the second element, which is index 1, then you put a square brackets after the name of the array and then put in the index number. Evaluating this will print out the second element, index 1. Perl 5 users will notice that I haven't changed the sigil at the beginning. That's because in Perl 6 we have sigil invariance. Once you have an array, it always is symbolized with an at mark. Actually, you don't need to put in an index there. You can leave out and have an empty square bracket, and that will mean the whole array. If I execute this, I'll get the same uh, three values back. In addition, as opposed to Perl 5, in Perl 6 you don't even need the parentheses here can still create the array and I still get back the same values. What if I would like to interpolate the array? Can I do this in Perl 6? Let's execute the second example. As you can see, at names is in the string. It's because in Perl 6 arrays are not interpolating automatically. How do I how can I really get the values? So here is where the empty square brackets are really useful. This time Perl understands that we actually mean the array, which is called names, and inserts all the values of the array within the string, with spaces in between the values. Similarly, I could put in one of the index values, and it will uh, interpolate that specific value. In addition, there is another way to interpolate the values, putting curly braces around the variable. Executing this will get me the old three values within the array. More than that, and if I go to switch to the third example, within those, those curly braces I can put actually any expression and Perl will evaluate that expression and the result will be inserted in the string. So what we see here is I call the join function that gets a string and then an array and it takes the elements of the array and in between every two element injects this string creating a concatenated string out of the, in this case, three elements. If I execute this version you will see it inserted a semicolon and a space in between every two elements. When you have fed up with the uh, uh, when you're fed up with typing quotation marks and commas between the values in the declaration of the array, you can use the pointy uh, brackets. This is, it works similarly to the QW in Perl 5. It takes the three values and creates a three element list that will build up this three element array. In the last example, we see how we can use, uh, how we can iterate over the elements of an array. I use the for loop; it gets an array 
and then after the arrow it has a scalar value. As you can see this scalar doesn't need to be declared using my because Perl automatically declares that for us and it declares within the scope of the following block. So you don't have to care about this dollar n here. In this case for will iterate over the values in at names putting foo in dollar name then bar then mu and printing out each one of the values. I hope you enjoyed this lecture and we'll come back for the next one. Goodbye.